What's going on? Welcome to some tabletop action over here at theworkprint.com. We're going to be reviewing Math Path Monster Adventure Through Math Mountain by Christopher Chaffee and published by Think Fun. So you've seen me do unboxings and impressions of um, different tabletop products in the past, but we've been wanting to do this for a while where we do reviews of board games and just have more board game content over here on the channel. And I wanted to do something a little bit different when it came to reviews of board games. Considering that they're most of the time not played by yourself, I thought it'd be best if we reviewed them, if I reviewed them with somebody else who also played with me. Um, this way you get differing opinions. And um, yeah, let's just get right into who's going to be helping me review this one. It is honestly the most competitive, they're the most competitive person I've ever played with. Um, they are ruthless and cutthroat and will do anything to win my daughter aria hi <laughs> let me go over what math path monster is math path monster is a game for two to four players recommended ages six and older in math path monsters a group of explorers work together and use your best math skills to help the explorers race back to the cave entrance and be crowned the champion of math mountain after laying out the game board place the explorer pawns into their stands Shuffle the power cards and place them face down in a stack next to the board, and then place the math monster pawn and one explorer pawn for each player at the monster's den. Pass the four dice and the two double-sided math boards to the youngest player to take the first turn. On each player's turn, they're going to roll all four dice, then they're going to choose two dice for the explorers, decide whether to add or subtract numbers, and then place them in either the addition or subtraction side of the explorer math board. That player may then move any one explorer forward to the next space with a number that is the result of adding or subtracting the two numbers. Again, because it's cooperative, you can choose any of the explorers. None of them are assigned to a particular player. Then use the two remaining dice for the math monster. Decide whether to add or subtract the numbers and place them in either the plus or subtraction sign of the monster math board. Then, just like with the explorers, move the math monster forward to the next space with a number that is a result of adding or subtracting the two numbers. Note, each space is shared by two numbers and can be reached by either number on the space. A turn ends when equations have been created for both an explorer and the math monster. Then pass all four dice and both math boards to the player on your left to start the next turn. Now, if the explorer lands on a power space with a rope, that player will draw a power card from the deck. Power cards tell you to make one or two moves to specific spaces on the board or to skip the math monster's turn completely. Helping the explorers escape the cave are one-way bridges. If an explorer pawn lands on a space with a bridge, move the pawn across the bridge in the direction of the arrow only. But be careful because this can help the math monster as well. If an explorer and the math monster land on the same space, a dice battle begins. The player who moved both pawns into the same space gathers all four dice they then roll the dice for the explorer team, add up all the numbers on all four dice, then roll the dice for the math monster, add up all the numbers on all four dice for the math monster, and then whichever number was higher wins. The winner draws and uses two power cards. One card must be drawn and played before drawing the second card. In the event of a tie, re-roll until there is a clear winner. The game ends until either all explorers or the math monster makes it to the cave entrance. If all explorers get there before the math monster, then you win. All right. So now that we know how it's played, let's talk about our impressions of it. Um, Ari and I played, I don't know, what, four or five different games of it, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we played with three people. We played with four people. And we played with just the two of us before. Yeah. Um, now, this is an edutainment game. This is aimed at ages six plus. Aria is 10 years old. Yeah. Almost 11. And I am much older than that. So first things first, uh, I mean, it's, as you uh, saw in the how to play, it is very basic math, right? I mean, at no point were we struggling <laughs> with the actual math aspect of it. And uh, Aria, your favorite subject in school is math, right? Yeah. Okay. So real quick, let's, why don't you tell me, what did you think about the game? I thought it was very fun. And... It was easy and quick. Yeah, I think most of the, the games took, what, at most 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. I, obviously, for us, the, the math was easy. 
Um, I do like the fact that it's a cooperative, ga cooperative game. I think when you're playing with younger players, um, especially ones as competitive as some that I know, that they can get a little bit frustrated. But when you're working together for a shared goal, I, I think that makes the experience much easier playing with uh, younger players. I also think that while the math was easy, I didn't find the game boring, right? Yeah. What about you? I thought it was fun while still not being that hard. Yeah, I, I think the added element of not just having to solve math and actually trying to strategize, right, is where it becomes a little bit more engaging for older players or, or, or parents. I mean, obviously this is aimed at for, you know, young kids on their own, but also to be played with, uh, parents played with the younger kids. And I think the actual strategy element of not just figuring out like, okay, which equation gets us the farthest on the board, but also um, which, which explorers should we be moving, right? Because yeah. um, although there are four different explorers at a time uh, and up to four different players and each explorer represents the number of players uh we can move any on any turn yeah i really like that element because then you have to also figure out which one is the best to move yeah um i also like that it doesn't for an, for a kids game an edutainment game um it doesn't dumb it down to levels of like say a shoots and ladder or a candy land um it respects its younger players, and I, I I appreciate that. I mean, like I said, we are she is well above the recommended starting age for this, and there were still times where she came up to me even after we played a handful of games before we're doing this review, and was like, "Hey, do you do you want to play just the, just the two yeah. of us?" It was a very fun game that I would definitely recommend. Yeah. yeah. What was your favorite part of the game? Probably just figuring out which character to move and how to not, like, mess up and, like, doing all the math and stuff. Okay. Uh, so the actual strategy behind yeah. it rather than... Yeah, I mean, I also... I, I think that the the game itself um, feels good to play. Like, I enjoy rolling dice. Dice mm -hmm. is always <laughs> a, a good time. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I do, like I said, I, I think the biggest thing for me is the one thing I was worried about was, am, am I going to be bored? Am I going to feel like I'm, you know, I, I think with a lot of uh, entertainment games and, and kids games in general, it just kind of feels like you are, um, you're just babysitting the experience, right? And I didn't feel like that. I was there being just as into it, um, trying to strategize um, and try my best not to just take over the the whole game and 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 letting her make her own decisions right yeah okay um so yeah let's get to it we're gonna give two scores um i will give my score but we'll have her give hers first all right on a score of one to ten um where would you rate math path monster um probably like a eight or nine Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna force you to pick one right now. A nine, probably. A nine. Okay. Yeah. I think that's pretty fair and not far off from mine. Uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna go <laughs> in between, uh, taking into consideration that this is for ages six and up and that it is a it is meant to be a, a learning tool, a, a fun one. Um, I'm gonna give this an eight point five out of ten. I, I'm gonna be honest. I I would play a version of this with harder math geared towards higher ages too. Like, I think that this is something that can scale um, across ages. And because of the actual strategy element involved and in the fact that it's not just solving the math, but um, actually using some, some critical thinking and having to think your path out ahead. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. You get a, a nine from Aria, 8.5 from me. And um, until next time, um, make sure to check out theworkprint.com. Uh, check out all of our socials. Make sure to... What do you do on YouTube videos? What do you tell people to do? Subscribe. Yeah, to like and subscribe. <laughs> and until next time, bye-bye. Say bye. Bye.